greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, located right on the corner of MLK and Union in the Mount Pleasant area. Praise our God. Well, today we're looking at Luke uh, chapter 7, amen, and hopefully we'll uh, complete Luke chapter 7 today, Lord willing, amen. Um, I'll focus on verse 31, beginning, but the previous 30 verses, we talked about the authority of the believer, uh, the centurion came to Jesus, uh, at least he sent some folks and says, you know, my servant is lying home, he's sick, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, the Jews said, you know, he built a synagogue and all this kind of stuff. He is worthy. And Jesus says, okay, I'll, I'll go heal him. And when he got near the place, the centurion said, hey, you know, I'm not worthy. He said, somebody else, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority. I said, uh, soldiers come and he come and go and he come and tell my servant to do this. And he does it. Okay. Just speak the word and my servant will be made whole. And Jesus went, oh, he marveled, he says. He's not seen such great faith, no, in Israel. And so uh, we piggyback on that to talk about the authority of the believers, okay? And you have to get that recording, okay? And then we talked about uh, what the kingdom looked like because John the Baptist was discouraged. And he sent two of his disciples saying, you know, are you he that should come or should we look for another? Now, John had already said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so, but he was discouraged in prison. And Jesus didn't chide them. He didn't try to do a lot of teaching. He just had them to watch him in ministry. And after they watched him in ministry, he said, go back and tell John what you saw. The blind eyes were open, lepers clean, the dead raised, the lame walked. And the poor has a gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who's not offended in me. And I believe when John got that word, he was encouraged. He knew that the kingdom of God was in manifestation. Because John and Jesus says, repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's within reach. Not, not 2,000 years from then, but it was within reach. And praise God. Well, hallelujah. Uh, one scripture says, up until the time of John, the kingdom of God was preached. Uh, but uh, since that time, uh, the violent take it by force. In other words, uh, people enter into the kingdom. They're seizing on the opportunity when it's presented. And well, praise God. We're kingdom people and kingdom children. And we talked about what the kingdom ought to look like. And it ought to look like what Jesus told John uh, disciples to go back and tell him what they have seen. I believe that's what the kingdom ought to look like. And we're believing that God is going to raise up ministry. Amen. In this 11th hour. Amen. Where the miraculous will be made manifest. Amen. Well, I believe it's still needed today. I know there's uh, many believers who are saying that the days of miracle uh, are, are over. And anytime they see a miracle, they want to give the devil the credit. Well, that's too bad. That is not my worldview. Anyway, well, praise our God. Anyway, listen, listen. All right, so now uh, we want to look at uh, uh, forgiveness, okay? As we begin to read in verse 31, amen. Well, no, well, not 31, but we're going, let's, let's talk. Uh, so so uh, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, uh, Jesus, amen, um, uh, after he had uh, um, uh, sent John's disciples back, he began to speak to the crowd. He says, you know, you know, when, when, why don't you come out to see when, when John was ministering, you know, did you, uh, you expect to see somebody in, uh, uh, you know, silk garments or uh, uh, a beautiful array? And no, 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 you got to go to King's houses to see that, you know, uh, what did you expect to see when you came out to John's ministry? Well, he goes on to tell him that John was, was, uh, was more than a prophet. Uh, and since that, uh, uh, of men born of women, there was none born greater than John the Baptist. Wow. Amen. And he goes on to say, and yet the least 
in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Wow. Praise God. We're kingdom people. The Bible says we've been translated out of the darkness, kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of his son. So Jesus was exalting John the Baptist and his ministry. Amen. Uh, but he said that these Pharisees rejected John's ministry and therefore they rejected God. Amen. But he goes on and says, who shall I liken this generation to? Speaking of those who had rejected John. And that's where verse 31 comes in. And the Lord says, where, where then? And the Lord says, where to shall I then lacken the men of this generation? And then what are they lack? They're like children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and you've not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. You know, children, amen. Uh, you can't please them, uh, you know. They're imitating their parents, you know. Maybe it's a wedding, so they're blowing pipes, or, uh, 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 or maybe they're imitating a, a funeral march. And, you know, we pipe, and you you had dance, and, you know, we've done this, and you had mourn, you know, uh, kids. You know, uh, no real conviction about anything, uh, 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 just trying to please uh, someone. Well, I believe Jesus is telling these Pharisees, you need to stop playing church, Okay. Uh, you are religious leaders, you're impacting people's lives, but you need to stop playing church, okay? Amen. You like children, all right? And then, and then uh, 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 he goes on to say, amen, uh, I believe he goes on to teach that uh, playing children leads to hypocritical judgment of others who don't line up with your way of doing things, okay? Uh, he says, for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say he has a devil. The son of man come, in, come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. And so uh, uh, so they were uh, being hypocritical judges of Jesus and others who don't line up with their way of doing things like the kids, you know. Uh, we pipe, but you didn't dance. You're not dancing to my tune. Listen, he goes on to say, but wisdom is justified of our children. Amen. Praise God. So, so uh, wisdom will honor, amen, those who are uh, uh, truly walking in the wisdom of God. And Amen. And uh, anything that wisdom speaks uh, through one of those children's mouth, amen, will be verified. And those children will, will be exalted because wisdom would indeed the wisdom of God will be justified of our children as they live it out, speak it out, walk it out, talk it out. Well, anyway, praise our God. Listen, um, and so in verse 36, we begin to talk about a sinful woman forgiven because uh, Jesus didn't come to condemn that woman or you. He didn't come to condemn you, amen? But he came to set you free and deliver you from shame and deliver you from guilt. I'm going to repeat it. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. Whoever you are listening to me, he come to deliver you and release you from shame and from guilt. All right. Um, I'm trusting I got somebody's attention on that. All right. Well, praise our God. So in Luke, begin reading at verse 36. And it says, uh, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So Jesus readily accepted this invitation. Now, the Pharisee's name was Simon. Then Simon had wrong motives when he invited Jesus. Was he wanting to come up uh, with a reason to accuse him like many of the Pharisees did? I don't know. I can't say that at all, okay? But I do know that Jesus readily accepted his invitation. Now, and I want you to understand, too, uh, but he, he did not extend the customary courtesy of afforded guests. What do you mean? Because in 7, in verse 44b, he said, I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. Okay, he didn't even give him any water to wash his feet. Now, he didn't have a servant to wash his feet. He didn't give him any water even to wash his own feet. And so, well, so, so, so I'm going to assume that uh, 
uh, uh, Simon's attitude was good, but he certainly did not extend uh, the full benefit uh, of the courtesy uh, to a guest. Didn't he provide water for Jesus to wash his feet? Now, well, praise our God. Listen, and, and then verse 37, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. Notice how he emphasized that. I mean, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, so, so he says, and behold, uh, a woman in the city which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus was set at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Now, the woman was a sinner. Well, <laughs> it implies that she was a notorious sinner. Probably a prostitute and even a thief. So, amen. But, but somehow, the Spirit of God had given this woman revelation. I want you to get this. Somehow, the Spirit of God had given this woman revelation to who Jesus was. Amen. Somehow, the Spirit of God had opened up understanding. And she knew that Jesus was the blameless Son of God. Uh, she knew that Jesus was God in the flesh. And she knew uh, that Jesus had to answer to all her problems. And she understood that even greater sinner as she was, amen, to, uh, as unworthy as she was, uh, that God had supplied to, uh, whatever she stood in need of, and it was in Jesus Christ. She knew that, amen. The Spirit of God had given her revelation. You know, God knows how to give revelation. I mean, the Bible talks about Enoch, the, the seventh from Adam, who prophesied. He knew some things about end time theology. How did he know it? God had given him revelation. The Bible says uh, the seventh from Adam prophesied. Uh, he prophesied about how that God was going to return with 10,000 of his saints to bring judgment on the ungodly. Listen, God had given him revelation. Praise our God. The Bible says, Noah, being one of God, Move with fear and prepare an ark. Hebrews eleven seven. God gives revelation. The woman with the issue of blood. She says, "If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole." How does she know that? God had given her revelation, and she exercised faith in the revelation that God had given her. Well, praise our God, and I said. Amen. And I said that this woman, God had given her revelation. The spirit of God had spoke to her. I thank God for this woman. Listen, listen. And, 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 and I want you to get this. I want you to think in terms of revelation, response, relationship, and reward. Revelation, response, relationship, and reward. And I learned these little things from, uh, uh, I was going to tell you what I learned it for, and the name uh, just went blank. And I'll, I'll try to remember it <laughs> as we go forward. But listen, listen, amen. Not my original idea, but listen, amen. And so when you begin to think about things, and so many times in scripture, these principles go forth, amen. And so uh, God gives revelation, amen. Many times it brings people into a right relationship with God. Amen. And then, uh, uh, um, or they have a relationship with God and, and God gives revelation and it, it causes them to make the right response and then there's a reward. And so when you think about faith, a lot of people only think about the reward. But now there's a process. Amen. This relationship. Yes, there's revelation. There's response and there's reward. Uh, Noah, Hebrews 11, 7. Uh, Noah be one of God. Now he already had this relationship because he found grace in God's sight. And so and God gave him revelation. Okay. He had a relationship. 
God gave him revelation. His response was that he built an ark for the repairing, for the, uh, amen, so uh, to save his household, okay? And his, re, his re, that was his response. His reward that he became heir of the righteousness of God, which is by faith, okay? Amen, okay? And so we see revelation, we see response, we see relationship, we see reward. And so this woman, amen, received this revelation from God. And somehow the Holy Spirit had given this revelation uh, uh, of, of, amen, and, 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 and she understood that uh, no matter how deep her sins were, which were many, that Jesus was her answer. And so she understood that he was God in the flesh and that he was able to meet her at her place of need. And so uh, uh, her response, uh, uh, she brought all that she had, this precious ointment uh, in her alabaster box and, and whatever she used that anoint, uh, ointment before in prior times, I don't know, uh, being a prostitute, if that was her case, uh, you know, and people got all kinds of ideas. Nevertheless, point is right now, Amen. She brought her most valuable possession, and which was her alabaster box full of ointment. Amen. And she began to anoint his feet. Amen. With that oil and with the tears. Amen. Wiping it with her hair. Amen. And she kissed his feet. In thanksgiving, she was worshiping him as the son of God and acknowledging what God had revealed to her about who Jesus is is. Amen. Uh, there was nothing sensual about this contact. Amen. This whole thing brought this lady, I believe, into ultimately a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Who was God in the flesh. And she received the reward of forgiveness of sin and her salvation. Amen. In her case, it was revelation. Amen. It was response. Amen. Amen. And it brought into a relationship, amen, and reward, amen. In Noah's case, it was relationship, revelation, response, and reward. Well, praise our God. All right, verse 38. And the Bible says, and stood, this woman came and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And you might wonder, well, how was she able to stand at his feet behind him? Because uh, you need to understand they were not sitting at a table like we sit, amen? Uh, uh, this table, amen, was a very low table on the floor and he was uh, laying on his side with his elbow probably propped up, okay? And his feet was behind him. And so uh, his feet was very much accessible to her. And so uh, so she came up, amen, as the scripture says, and he, uh, uh, to his feet. So praise God. And so uh, at any point, the Bible says that, and stood at his feet behind him. All right, yeah. Uh, weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kiss his feet and anointed them with oil. So yeah, he was in an inclined position uh, on his side and, his, and she came and approached him uh, from behind, so to speak. Okay, anyway, uh, praise God. Uh, verse 39. Now when the Pharisees, which had bitten him, saw it, when the Pharisee, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he was a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touch him, toucheth him, for she is a sinner. <laughs> well, praise God, he was too. But uh, <laughs> well, Lord, <have> mercy. <coughs> well, excuse me. Well, praise our God. So, interesting. Now, now I want to say this. <clears throat> yeah, uh, this Pharisee could have never reached this woman spiritually. Amen? 
Uh, not that he wanted to, but let's say if he had a heart to reach the loss, he would have never been able to reach this woman. Why? Because he could have never been able to get past her sin. He could never get past judging her. He could never get past looking down on, on her. And you may be in that situation yourself. And that's why you can't reach people because you're judging people. You're thinking you're better than they are. You're seeing their sin. But somehow you don't see yours. This Pharisee could have never reached that woman. Amen. And there's people you can't reach because of your heart and your attitude. Let, let the Holy Ghost check you out. <laughs> but God himself had given this woman revelation knowledge about what he was doing in Jesus. She boldly enters into the Pharisee's residence and boldly washed Jesus' feet with her tears of repentance and poured on that fragrant oil from her alabaster box, the fragrant filling the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who was this woman? Who was this woman? See, that's probably three incidents in the Bible that talks about uh, some woman anointing Jesus uh, and so forth. Listen, listen. So, well, and people got a lot of ideas. I, I'm going to say it's not Mary Magdalene, as some suppose. Spoken of in Luke chapter 8, verse 2. I mean, the one that Jesus cast out seven devils. So this is not Mary Magdalene. All right. All right. It's also a different person. Amen. Uh, than Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Because Mary, the sister of Lazarus, also poured oil on Jesus feet, uh, it, who is said to anoint the feet of Christ and wipe them with a hair, John 12, 3. That was Mary, the sister of Lazarus, which took place in Bethany. This incident is taking place in Galilee. The incident that took place in Bethany was prior to Jesus' crucifixion. The incident that's taking place here is way in a uh, long time before the, the crucifixion because Jesus left there and went on uh, many more missions of teaching and preaching, okay? All right? The character given in this woman that we're reading in Luke uh, does not seem so well to agree with Lazarus' sister because she was a great sinner, and, and we're not sure that that applies to uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' sister. You know, obviously, we've all sinned and come short, and everybody needs to be saved, but we don't know that the scriptures show her being a wicked woman who was converted. Hey, I mean, maybe she could have, okay? But we don't know that the scripture bears it out. Anyway, uh, all right. And so again, this was in Galilee. Mary was in Bethany. All right. And neither, you know, and, 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 and so uh, this took place in our text in the house of Simon the Pharisee. Okay. And that took place in the house of Lazarus, you know. But then there's another incident over in Matthew 26. Okay. Now, is, is this the same as Mary. Well, I, I don't know, but it certainly took place in Bethany. But if if Jesus washed feet, if if Mary washed Jesus' feet with the hair in Lazarus' house, then this is a third incident because this took place in the house of Simon the leper. Okay? So this woman in Luke is not the woman in Matthew 26, 6 because in Matthew 26, 6, this was Simon the leper's house, and this was in Bethany. 
in Luke, it is in Simon the Pharisee's house, and it is in Galilee. Okay, all right, so, all right. So, praise God, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah, so, uh, perhaps the Bible shows three different incidents where a woman washed Jesus' feet with her hair and ointment, and uh, at the most, it's two. That is, if you put Matthew 26 at Simon's, the leper's house, and the incident that's spoken of in John 12 in the same category. But again, uh, I don't know that you can do that. Nevertheless, it's interesting. It's possible, okay? <laughs> All right. So, you can study it out yourself. And um, all right, so now we're going to go a little further. All right, time is running out on us, okay? So in Luke uh, uh, chapter 7, uh, verse 40, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Uh, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. Uh, one owed him 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom uh, he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. Okay. And so uh, laying the foundation to show that this woman was a great sinner and she uh, loved more because she's been forgiven for so much. And he goes on to explain himself. Uh, this woman certainly had great needs. Uh, in verse 44, he says, uh, he turned to the woman and he said, Simon, seest thou this woman? I entered to thy house. Thou gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet, uh, uh, my head with all. Thou dost not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I said unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Praise God. A revelation. She moved based on a revelation that she has received from God. Amen. To, uh, her response. Amen. God had given a revelation who Jesus was and that he met her needs. And she responded uh, by uh, going to him and, and, and pouring out her love and weeping in repentance and, and, and pouring out her alabaster box. Amen. And Jesus, amen, to, uh, amen, says her faith has made her whole. Listen, amen. It, I believe it brought her into a relationship by faith. I believe she was operating by revelation faith, brought her into a relationship, amen, and she received the reward of forgiveness of her sins and salvation, amen. And I want to draw your mind again uh, back to Hebrews eleven seven, amen, by faith, Noah, being one of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house. And by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Amen. Noah had a relationship. Amen. God gave him the revelation by the ark. Uh, he moved in fear and prepared that ark by faith. Praise God and reward. He became the heir of the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Praise God. And so when you think in terms of receiving from God, there's a process. There's revelation. There's a right response. And there is relationship. And then finally, there is the reward. Well, praise our God. I want to say that Jesus did not come to condemn you, but to release you from guilt and shame. And you can surrender to his lordship today and you can confess your sins and Jesus will forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Righteousness. That's revelation faith. Yeah. He's given you revelation today. He want to bring you in the right relationship with himself. Amen. He wants you to make the right response, response and surrender to his lordship, receive him by faith and you receive the, receive the water, reward of forgiveness and salvation. Amen. It's in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. 
The Lord smile on you, shed his countenance upon you. Lord, give you peace.